Welcome to the video, everybody. Uh, this is one that I think is debatably might be one of the most helpful videos that I think I've made on this channel. Uh, the reason being is that I've actually broken down um, a lot of the effects that I think are the heaviest in Lumion, just so that we get a better idea of kind of how uh, this is going to uh, interact with our scenes. So this is all going to be up on the drive. So I, I really recommend you download this because it'll take you um, just a little bit to kind of comb through, but I think it'll give you a better um, explanation of everything. I was able to get my render times down to about five or 6% of the original when I had everything turned on. Uh, so while you're probably not going to get performance like that, uh, you will be able to definitely see at least a performance bump. Uh, and you'll be able to get renders out faster or do more renders. So um, yeah, we're going to hop into that. I hope you all enjoy. Right, so first things first, we're just going to take a quick look at the scene that we've kind of set up. Um, what I did is I just took the museum example scene. I uh, cut the clip down just to three seconds, so it is really quick. Uh, the reason being is because I wanted to be able to render long enough that we'd get a good idea of the time, but I also didn't think it was really necessary to render out like 10 seconds um, just because I would have increased my render times like three times. Uh, just a quick note too, I'm not going to go into stuff about like star quality and um, resolution because to me that's like, that's just, I guess, not really the focus of this. Like, I want to focus specifically on materials, um, like 3D grass and the actual rendering effects. So, yeah, what uh, we have, though, is just this quick scene. And then we only have these particular effects on. Now, I guess that the order you do them in might kind of affect this, except I, I think that just based on the way that I kind of broke it down into percentages, I don't think that that would be too much of a problem. So if we just kind of go around in the scene here, the reason why I turn this to grass is because we have all this space in the back here just being taken up, whereas we're not actually going to see that in the render. So I actually thought that'd be a good example because I think this is something a lot of people do. Um, and then I just kind of threw some fine nature trees in here. Um, probably could have used more as an example, but I thought that was pretty good. Uh, so right. Uh, the very first one um, that I did, which I'll just pull up here now. As I said, these are very fast clips, but uh, if I just need to find this here. So this is the, the full effect one. So basically this is with everything on. Uh, this took 33 minutes for three seconds at three stars, 1920 resolution. So if we just let this go, as you can see, we're in this kind of like weird flickering up here. That's from the global illumination um, because that is a really, really heavy um, effect. And so that's it actually is gonna look better at the end. But yeah, this was 33 minutes. Which I thought was kind of crazy like that definitely took longer than I thought it was going to um, so right off the bat what is the very first thing that we can do to remove this so um, you can actually just straight up cut your render times in half if you are using too many reflection planes you probably won't get as great of a performance cut as I did just because I was trying to kind of use too many reflection planes but that seems like it's the one that uh, is one of the biggest culprits. Uh, and let me just show you a quick example of what I'm talking about. So I put reflection planes on everything. Um, it's stuff that just makes no difference. Um, in this particular scene, I think the only one I'd actually put a reflection plane on is this main window, of course. Maybe you could put one on the side window here, but I would probably say it's not worth it. Um, just because this is such a big glass window, there's so many like reflections that I just think that you kind of need to have at least one. So just by doing this, and cutting it down to one. Um, let me just make sure that I actually have it on the right one here. Yeah, so something like that looks good. Um, yeah, so just by doing that, I cut it down to 16 minutes, which is what we have here. So the reflection planes are removed except for one. So that one change cut the render times in half, 51%, boom. Like that was, uh, yeah, that was it, which I was I was really happy with. Um, so yeah, the first thing I would look at if you think that your scenes are taking a long time are the reflection planes, because something that I think people forget about too is that you don't have to put like five reflection planes on if it's gonna be seen in different clips. Like if a clip is only using one reflection plane, you absolutely only want that one reflection plane because it, it just kills your render times. Like that's, that's one thing that Lumion, um, it, it, it's kind of like a hidden, <laughs> expense because people will be like oh just throw some reflection planes out there this is probably what's killing your render time so i'll keep that in mind um the next one too 
to fix is global illumination. And this is one that's pretty easy in my recommendation is just to get rid of it altogether <laughs> because it just does not work as well as hyperlight. Um, that is the one that you should be using in my opinion. Um, and yeah, just by doing that, uh, I will just show this one again quickly. So this one, it actually looks better than the one that took 33 minutes because now those weird splotches are gone at the top there. Um, this is just the area you kind of want to focus on right there. Um, but yeah, so that's, that's pretty awesome. So this is now down to 11 minutes, uh, and right here. So based on when we had the reflection planes fixed. So from this clip here to this clip, just by removing global illumination, we cut the render time down 31%. And so that's why this is like, this one uh, to me is not in the highest tier over here of like extremely heavy, but it is definitely in like the fairly heavy one. Like it's, it's kind of on the verge. Um, so yeah, that was a pretty big, pretty big one. Like, yeah, if you're having trouble with that, just get rid of global illumination. Like these two alone, uh, you'll, you'll see huge changes in your render time. Uh, the other one that I kind of wanted to take a look at is another one that I think is really bad for people, uh, killing the render times. And it's when you set the skylight to ultra. I've gone through this in a couple of videos. Like if you were doing like a still and you think it looks good, just go for it. I, I think that's kind of like the, the moral of this too, is like, if you're just doing stills, I don't think it matters. Like, even if it takes like five minutes to do like, like one picture, it's, if it's just a still, who cares? Like, that's kind of how I see it. But for the animations, it really does matter because, uh, whenever we're doing animations, basically, no matter how long it needs to be, I always try and get it under eight hours because I don't want Lumion rendering while I'm like up during the day working. I want it to be going at night. And eight hours is typically enough for me to turn it on, go to bed, wake up, and then it's done. And if I have to, you know, maybe render like a clip out or something to fix it, I can. Um, so that's why I've spent so much time going through and trying to figure all this stuff out. Um, but yeah, the, the skylight is one that is bad. Like just click it to normal. I don't think the brightness and the saturation affect the render times. I think the render quality is the only thing. Skylight in planar reflections and projected reflections that one I think can add a little bit of time, but I think planar is only a problem if you have a lot of reflection planes. Um, and then the projected reflections, I think when I tested that it wasn't that bad. So I think that you don't have to kind of get in the weeds of that, just set it to normal for animations. And that's also a huge, um, a huge drop. So right there, we went from 11 minutes down to four and a half. Um, so that's a 60% drop based on the previous clip. Uh, and I will just pull that one up quickly. And again, I, I I'm, I'm showing these kind of quickly just to, uh, just to kind of have it all here. So you can kind of see what I was working on, but I really recommend that you go and download some of these. I'll have them numbered so you can kind of see the quality as it goes down. Cause you, I just don't think you're going to get to see all those changes based on the YouTube video. Like I'll, I'll kind of show you as much as I can, but you, you really do have to download, um, the videos to see the best one. So skylight low. So this one is now four minutes. So um, yeah, maybe I will just throw up, like, maybe I'll edit in like the clips over each other just so you can kind of see us. But this, this clip here, the, uh, the one that takes four minutes, in my opinion, is not that much worse than the, um, it's not much worse than the one that took 33 minutes. Like this to me is an acceptable level. Like, you know, you could brighten some stuff up. It could definitely be a little bit better in some areas, but I think that the fact that it's taking one tenth of the time, uh, is definitely worth it. Um, and yeah, so then, like I said, that was a 60% drop. The other thing that I did, and this one is not necessarily as easy because you don't want to remove 3d grass altogether. But what I do want to point out is that if you like look behind your camera and you see things like this, this has got to go like all this grass here, just if you're using SketchUp, like drape a line onto it, just draw a line, do something like just, you can't have this much 3d grass behind the camera, um, because it's a really bad one too. Um, like if I just go like this and I click here and I go, okay, I'm going to change this to, uh, a sidewalk material. Like, uh, where would this be? Uh, maybe we'll just say stone. Uh, we'll just do something like this. So just by doing that and getting rid of all that grass in the background there, that cut our render times down another 61. So that was actually the one that gave us the best performance change. Um, but the re the thing that I will kind of note about this is that this is all dependent on the scene. Like if you only have a tiny bit of 3d grass and you change it, you're going to get, you know, only a little bit of change. Whereas the ones that I was mentioning before, like global illumination, skylight reflection planes, 
those ones will all kind of give you like a static change in performance, at least from what I've tested. Whereas 3D grass is obviously completely dependent on the scene that you're looking at. Um, but yeah, so those are the those are the big ones. Like if you do, if you get clean up the reflection planes, change global illumination, skylight to low, and then 3D grass removed, that made my render time go from 33 minutes and 10 seconds down to one minute and 48 seconds for a three second clip using a 2080 ti um and you know e even if you don't have that great of a graphics card i think that this should still theoretically have like kind of close numbers like skylight is still going to be the one or one of like the, the, the highest effects and then 3d grass is not really an effect but it is something that you have to watch out for um and then yeah the ones that i just kind of want to quickly mention um even though they weren't that crazy so find shadows off and real skies off i got it actually took a second more when i turned those off i think for both of these but it was such a small amount that i don't think it really matters like if you want to have real skies i think like go nuts i don't think that that's going to increase render times enough that it matters because while we are trying to decrease render times we we don't want to decrease the quality like it will it's kind of like a balance like if you get a 10 percent drop in performance but it cuts your quality in half that's not worth it but vice versa you know you could take a 10 percent quality hit to cut your render times in half it all just depends on what you need so that's something to keep in mind so yeah for shadow i mean fine detail maybe it gets more complicated if you have more spotlights but i, I think that i'm fairly confident saying that fine detail shadow and real skies are not that crazy on performance um one that i was actually kind of surprised by is hyperlight so hyperlight actually gave us a 20% drop when we disabled it, which to me was kind of surprising because I didn't think that Hyperlight was that expensive. Like I thought it was, you know, a pretty quick one, but that's something to keep in mind. Hi Hyperlight is one that I'd, I'd almost say like, be careful getting rid of it though, because it does add so much to the scene. But if you're like completely strapped for time, this is one that is worth getting rid of. It's just like, uh, yeah, I don't know. That That's one that I'd be a little bit cautious about. Um, and yeah, skylight, you can just turn it right off. So if you're still having performance issues, don't change it to low, just remove it altogether. Um, that one, uh, I find it adds a little bit to the scene, but again, like for a 23% decrease, I think it was, yeah, like that's, um, that's pretty worth it. So as you can see, like between tier one and tier two, you can lose a lot of your render time by doing this. Like it's definitely worth it. The fine nature, this one is kind of a, I guess like a tentative one because I only replaced these three trees and I did actually get like a 6% bump in performance, but I feel like that's, I feel like those are actually heavier than it seems. Like this one might actually be like a tier two one, but just for this scene, it's, it's three. So I keep that in mind, but fine nature is fantastic. If you are kind of like you, it's right in the foreground, but if it is kind of off in the distance, like even like these ones. You know, I, I just don't think it's, it might not be worth using it, it. It's all just dependent on how you think the scene looks with or without it. Um, but they are pretty heavy. Like if you just flip on something like this, you know, is it going to break the scene? No. And you might get a little bump in it. And as I said, like Lumion to me is very important for the speed because, you know, if we have all the time in the world, we use Blender very often. So we could do an animation in Blender, but that could take like 48 hours of rendering if not more like maybe even like 72 hours or something like that depending on how complex the scene is so if we are doing an animation that we need to do in a fairly fast turnaround time with you know like good quality lumion is what we want to do and like i said i'm always trying to aim it under that eight hours um just to actually render out um so yeah that that's basically it um it's just something i kind of wanted to run through um yeah, just to reiterate what I said, though, I did actually go from 33 minutes down to just under two. So it's about five, six percent of what the original render time was. So if we're looking at this by like frame, um, like per frame, when everything was on, it was taking about 22 seconds a frame. And when I kind of optimized everything just with these four out of the way, it was only taking a minute 20. The reason why this this goes up here is this one was actually higher on the list, but I figured just for simplicity. I would kind of just switch these two. Um, that's why this one, this number goes up. But um, yeah, so th I thought that uh, that was pretty cool. Uh, hopefully people found this video helpful and interesting. Uh, it did take me a bit of time just to render everything out and kind of think about how I want to talk about it. But I am 
confident saying like without a shadow of a doubt that reflection planes, skylight, 3D grass, and global illumination, they're the worst ones. Like maybe find nature depending on the scene. Like they might kind of work the same way as 3D grass, but if you kind of get a handle on how to just use these effects properly and how to fit the scene and when you can use and when you can't, you'll see huge increases in your render time. Like this alone might be able to almost like salvage a computer that you think might not be good enough for Lumion because you, you might honestly just be asking too much of your graphics here. Like I've even, I've kind of pushed my 2080 Ti too far even sometimes where I'm just like, it's just going to take like 36 hours. And like, if you have a 36 hour time in Lumion to do like a, even like a minute scene or something like that, I don't think that that's a reasonable uh, time frame to kind of do it. Like you definitely have to bump down the resolution or the quality or something like that. Um, because it's like I said, like Lumion is, you know, in my opinion, it's, it's, to, it's for speed, but it's also like what I was talking about where like you get maybe less quality in an animation as opposed to like blender and things like that. But you get it in such a, a reasonable amount of time that you don't need a crazy computer or a render farm to do it. Um, you can uh, just use an, you know, an average computer and get those quality renders. Um, so yeah, I really hope that um, this video was interesting. If you did find it helpful, I'd really appreciate it if you could hit that like button and also the subscribe button because it really helps me out with the YouTube algorithm and it just honestly makes me happy whenever I see people are subscribing to the channel uh, and they're really enjoying the content. It, it motivates me to kind of find uh, just some new interesting topics to uh, kind of discuss and also makes me kind of want to sharpen my own skills so that uh, I can teach, uh, I can just kind of teach um, some things that I've picked up. Um, if you are already subscribed, I just want to say thank you very much. Uh, I'll see you in one of the future videos. If you have any uh, suggestions for future videos, I'd really appreciate it if you could hit um, or if you could just <laughs> comment below the video uh, and tell me your thoughts. Um, and one last time, all this stuff is up on the drive. So if you want to see this, um, just these charts or any of the videos, all that stuff is up there in the link below. Have a good one, guys. I'll see you in the next video.